All right, happy Friday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. We've made it through another week almost. We can celebrate that. And across Southeast Texas, we can be happy about the fact that there's nothing from the tropics headed our way. However, we do still have a monster of a hurricane out in the west central Atlantic. The name is Lee, so I'm tracking the latest with Lee and also our tropical storm in the east central Atlantic and that one is Margo. So still two big systems out there that we're monitoring that could still have some impact. So let's get right to it on this Friday. There's a look at tropical storm Margo still out in the eastern Atlantic. It is expected to become a hurricane this weekend, but the good news with that one, it likely will make a shift, make a turn to the north long before it threatens the US. So that is some good news. As far as Hurricane Lee, we're still monitoring this one closely because the models are not in total agreement as to whether it's going to make a turn to the north or whether it will get uncomfortably close to the east coast of the U.S. So we are tracking it closely, but you can see it is still very organized, not quite as strong as it was previously. Of course, it was all the way up to a category five hurricane. It is still a category four hurricane out in the west central Atlantic. So still a very powerful hurricane. Winds now down to 150 miles per hour and movement is to the west northwest around 13 miles per hour. Pressure was even lower than this, but now it's back up to 942 millibars. Usually when hurricanes get this powerful, they go through what we call eye wall replacement cycles and every now and then you may get a little bit of dry air getting pulled into that system. This one has kind of been encountering some drier air getting pulled into the western side. So there's been a lot more convection or a lot more showers and storms blowing up on the eastern side, but it is still very healthy nonetheless. Anytime you're talking about a major hurricane category three or higher, that is a very dangerous and powerful hurricane, even though it's going to go through some minor fluctuations. So Hurricane Lee still with 150 mile per hour winds and it is getting closer to the Lesser Antilles. It is going to push north of the Lesser Antilles this weekend and then by Monday it should track north of Puerto Rico, north of Hispaniola, of course Haiti and the Dominican Republic, but it's going to get uncomfortably close to the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas and potentially the east coast of the U.S. Even without a direct landfall for the east coast of the U.S. we're still talking about very strong potentially life-threatening rip currents, big time surf and swells along the east coast as early as Sunday. So folks, in the U.S. on the East Coast, we'll have to worry about those things, even without a direct landfall. But here's what we're expecting with Hurricane Lee Saturday afternoon, 140 mile per hour winds. That still puts it at a category four. Sunday afternoon, 145 mile per hour winds. Monday, still a category four. Very powerful, weakening a little bit likely by Wednesday. Still a major category three hurricane though with 125 mile per hour winds. Notice by Wednesday, it's getting a little closer to the US, but some of the models are kind of taking it and curving it north before it would reach the West Coast, but others are not doing that. So of course we'll have to monitor things closely as we get towards the middle and end of next week when Lee could potentially start to produce and cause more impacts for the US. As far as Margo, it is still a tropical storm, still out in the eastern Atlantic. I'm not as concerned about this one because it looks like it will make that curve to the north this weekend and next week, and it will continue booking it to the north. So it looks like it's not going to affect any major land area anytime soon, although it is forecast to become a category one hurricane. Should maintain tropical storm status through Sunday afternoon and evening, but by 1 p.m. Monday up to a category one hurricane with 80 mile per hour winds and it is expected to have winds up to 85 miles per hour by Wednesday afternoon. So Margo is going to be tracked and monitored closely, but right now a much weaker system as compared to Lee. Maximum sustained winds only 40 miles per hour and that movement to the west northwest at 17 miles per hour. Notice the pressure much higher than what we're seeing in Lee because this is a weaker system. So usually the higher pressure means a weaker system, lower wind, the lower the pressure, the stronger the system and the stronger the wind. So we've got Hurricane Lee, we've got Tropical Storm Margo, and we will continue to be dealing with both of these systems out there. We did have what was left of Franklin, but now, as I mentioned in my last update, a 0% chance for anything happening with Franklin. It's pretty much gone. 
So we could say goodbye to Franklin and hopefully we could say goodbye to Margot and Lee at some point next week before they cause too many issues. But for now, we are monitoring both of those closely, especially Lee, which could cause some problems for the US. As far as the Gulf of Mexico, things are quiet, but you could see that big complex of showers and strong to severe storms rolling through our area and portions of Louisiana. That is not tropical in nature, but of course we are monitoring that locally. But as far as anything developing that could turn into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane, I don't see that happening out in the Gulf and the Caribbean looks fairly quiet as well. We still have that big heat dome to our west and we do have that complex of storms now building just east of Houston. But if we did see anything developing in the Gulf, of course, as we've been mentioning the last several weeks, water temps are super warm out there. We've got water temperatures in the middle to upper 80s, up to around 90 degrees off to the south and east of New Orleans, just off of the Louisiana, Mississippi, Gulf Coast. So we've got some super warm waters that certainly would act to fuel and strengthen any system that could make it into the Gulf very quickly. Same deal for the Atlantic water temperatures, not quite as warm out here as they are in the Gulf, but many spots showing low to middle 80s. So it is certainly going to be water that could continue to strengthen these systems as we get them developing. So at least right now, we just have those two systems we're monitoring, Hurricane Lee and Tropical Storm Margo. If we do get another tropical wave to develop in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, or the Atlantic, we would monitor it because it could potentially become Nigel. That would be the next name on the list. And then we would have Ophelia and Philippe. So we've still got several names that we possibly could get through. It's already been very active the last couple of weeks and we have a long way to go. We've got to get through all of the rest of September and November and of course October as well. Typically the most active period between now and at the end of September and then October can still be fairly active the first couple of weeks before things fall off, but still calling for potentially an above normal season, 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes from the Colorado State University forecasters. That was their latest update and that puts us above that average of 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. Of course, that's including the systems that we've already had. So here's where we are. We are getting very close to the peak of hurricane season around September 10th. So we'll continue to track Margo and Lee. We've still got to get through the rest of our hurricane season all the way through November 30th. We've been fortunate in Southeast Texas. We've missed out on any of those storms. We haven't had any major landfall. We haven't had anything get too close to us. Even when we did have Idalia move into the Gulf, it did pass well to our east. So good news for us there. But of course, you always want to be prepared because you never know when these systems can pop up. They can pop up quickly and then they can turn and head in our direction. So it's always a good idea to have our Fox 26 weather app downloaded on your phone. You can get all of your tropical weather updates. Also, make sure to turn the alerts on. And if we do get any tropical watches, warnings, hurricane, tropical storm watches or warnings, you can get those alerts. And also, if we get any local alerts for severe storms or flood warnings, flood advisories, you can get those as well. Well, that will do it for your Friday afternoon tropical weather update. I am Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Have a great evening and a great weekend.